Are you ready to embark on an incredible journey from Tokyo to Kyoto, but not sure of the best way for your particular trip? Let's demystify the best travel options for reaching Kyoto from Tokyo so you can make the best decision for your itinerary and have a seamless and enjoyable journey. And by the way, if you're going to Osaka, this video is for you too, as it's almost identical. Let's start with the fastest method. The most iconic, efficient, and fastest way to get to Kyoto from Tokyo is by taking the Shinkansen, Japan's legendary bullet train, known for its punctuality, comfort, and ease of use. The Shinkansen will whisk you away at nearly 300 kilometers per hour and can get you to Kyoto in about two hours and 15 minutes. You can marvel at the picturesque landscapes that unfold along the way, and if you're sitting on the right side of the train on your way south to Kyoto, you might even get a glimpse of Mount Fuji. The name of the Shinkansen line is called the Tokaido Shinkansen. And within the Tokaido Shinkansen, there are three trains, the Nozomi, Hikari, and Kodama. In Tokyo, you can board the Tokaido Shinkansen at two stations, Tokyo Station and Shinagawa Station. There are no other train stations in Tokyo where you can board the Tokaido Shinkansen. But if you are staying in Yokohama, you can board the Tokaido Shinkansen at Shin Yokohama Station. All departing trains will arrive at Kyoto Station. With many departures daily, 100, maybe 200, or is it 300? The journey can take as little as 2 hours and 15 minutes if you ride the Nozomi. The Hikari takes 2 hours and 40 minutes, and the Kodama 3 hours and 30 minutes. That's a long time. Why is that one so much longer? Well, because it stops at every station along the way to Kyoto. We have a detailed video explaining how to get from Tokyo to Kyoto using the JR Pass. And the JR Pass now includes the fastest train, the Nozomi. However, if you want to ride the Nozomi along with your JR Pass, it will cost an extra fee. If you don't have a JR Pass, that's no problem. You can purchase Shinkansen tickets individually. I'll link to our video explaining how to purchase and collect your individual Shinkansen ticket. When you purchase Shinkansen tickets individually, they all cost the same. So you can ride the Nozomi, Hikari, or Kodama. But if you want to get to Kyoto in the shortest amount of time, you're going to want to take the Nozomi. So why not, since they're all the same price. The current price for a one-way ticket in ordinary class, unreserved, is 13,320 yen. If you want a reserved seat, expect to pay about 600 yen more. If you want more luxury and comfort, you can purchase a green car seat. Just remember, those are all reserved only. So again, the total cost for an unreserved seat in ordinary class is 13,320 Japanese yen. And by taking the Nozomi, it will get you from Tokyo to Kyoto in two hours and 15 minutes. The second fastest method, domestic flights. While flying is the quickest way to get near Kyoto, it will actually take between three and five hours to get from Tokyo to Kyoto. Why? Well, first you need to get to either Narita Airport or Haneda Airport in Tokyo, and that could take you an hour or more. Then once you arrive, you still need to check in go through security and wait for your flight, and hopefully it's not delayed. Then once you arrive in Kyoto, oh wait, there's no airport in Kyoto. However, there are two in Osaka, Itami and Kansai International. Itami or ITM is much closer to Kyoto. However, the flights to ITM are usually out of Haneda and more expensive. Kansai or Kix is much farther away south, but the prices are much cheaper since they have low cost carriers such as Peach Airlines, and Jetstar. However, it can get pricey too if you're booking last minute. But tickets start at around $60 one way. Prices to ITM can be over $200 one way. From ITM, the most efficient way to get to Kyoto is by taking the airport limousine bus. There is one bus about every 20 minutes and it will take you about an hour to get from ITM to Kyoto Station, traffic depending. And the cost is 1,350 Japanese yen. And for luggage, you can store it in a luggage compartment. And if it's small enough, you can put it on your lap. Of course, you can take the trains, but that requires going to very big and crowded Shin Osaka station, and you might even have to make a transfer. Because of this, we don't recommend taking the train to Kyoto from ITM, because you probably have luggage as well. So again, the best option to get from ITM to Kyoto is by taking the airport limousine bus. Total cost for flying into ITM and taking the bus is $159. This is just an estimate of price of the airplane and your bus ticket. The time it will take to get from Narita or Haneda to ITM is about an hour and 10 minutes. And the time from ITM to Kyoto Station is anywhere between 50 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. So the total time, not including the time at the airport, will be about two hours and 25 minutes. If you fly into Kansai Airport, you can take the Haruka Express to Kyoto Station. 
The Haruka Express is a clean, fast, and efficient train with plenty of luggage space. You can reserve seats, and if you get lucky, you might even get to ride the Hello Kitty Haruka Express. It takes one hour and 20 minutes to get from Kansai Airport to Kyoto Station, and the cost for an adult one-way ticket is currently 2,200 Japanese yen. And while this might take 20 minutes longer to get to Kyoto compared to taking the bus from ITM, it's a direct shot and you don't have to worry about any traffic. The Haruka Express runs every 30 minutes except the very first and last trains of the night where you can wait up to an hour. Link to the timetable in the description below. So the best option to get from Kansai Airport to Kyoto is by taking the Haruka Express. If you add up the costs for your flight from Narita Airport to Kansai Airport and the cost of the Haruka Express, that comes out to about $75. Again, as mentioned before, this is just an estimate and it is again showing you a price from Narita, which is the cheaper option. And that flight time from Narita to Kansai Airport is about an hour and 40 minutes. The time from Kansai to Kyoto is an hour and 20 minutes. So the total time, not including the time at the airport, is three hours. Another option is you can take a taxi from Kansai Airport to Kyoto. We did this once, we hired a taxi in advance at a set price. This was a great option for us since we're a family of five and we have a lot of luggage. But it was still a very nice ride and our trip only took an hour because there was no traffic. The total cost was 22,000 Japanese yen, but hey, it was door-to-door -door service and we highly recommend it. Again, I just want to reiterate the fact that when you're at the airport, there's going to be extra time such as collecting your luggage and deboarding the plane. The slowest method, overnight limousine bus. Overnight buses take anywhere between seven hours and nine hours to go from Tokyo to Kyoto. If you prefer to save on accommodation and costs and want to maximize your time, overnight buses provide a budget-friendly and practical option. These buses are very comfortable with reclining seats, some have Wi-Fi, toilets, and there's even women-only buses. They depart from major stations throughout Tokyo. They leave in the evening time and arrive at Kyoto in the morning. Now, while the journey takes a lot longer than the Shinkansen, it does allow you the option to sleep while traversing that distance between the two cities. The prices start as low as 2,200 Japanese yen, but they can quickly go up depending on the time of day and the amenities that you need. So please purchase your tickets far in advance as they often sell out. You can purchase them as far in advance as four months. Also, prices can vary, especially if it's holiday season, you can expect to pay more. Here are some important notes. All passengers require their own seats, including infants, and you must wear a seatbelt. You can bring on board your own luggage, but you must be able to carry it yourself and you need to keep it with you. Otherwise, the better option is to store it in a luggage trunk. If you're a light sleeper, then taking the overnight bus is probably not a good idea for you as you're not gonna feel rested when you arrive. And finally, the overnight buses to Tokyo arrive early, some as early as 5 a.m., so have a plan. And personally, we have never taken the overnight bus. However, we have taken many long buses to get to the airports in Japan, and these have always been really clean, nice, and with toilets. Even with our kids, it was a nice option. And some companies even offer daytime buses, but expect to pay more for those too. For the total cost of the bus, expect to pay around 3,570 Japanese yen. Again, this is just an estimate. And an example going from Shinjuku Station to Kyoto Station will take eight hours and 10 minutes, and you will arrive at 5.40 a.m. For all three of these options we just discussed, either the Shinkansen, airplane, or by taking the bus, you are most likely going to arrive at Kyoto Station. From here, you can easily get to your accommodation by hopping on another local train, taking a bus, or a taxi. Or maybe you're lucky and your accommodation is within walking distance. If you did take the bus and you arrived super early, there are plenty of coin lockers available at Kyoto Station. Here's a couple more options for you. Rent a car. For travelers seeking flexibility and the ability to explore at their own pace, renting a car could be an interesting and fun choice. While Tokyo's bustling streets can be intimidating, Japan's roads are very well maintained and I've personally found it a lot stress-free compared to driving in Thailand or the United States. But remember to familiarize yourself with the local regulations and rules and consider renting a GPS for navigation. Well, actually, I would say renting a GPS is a must or, you know, at least use your phone. Now, if you decide to rent a car, there's going to be multiple costs. First, the cost of renting the car itself. Compact cars start at around $60 a day or about $350 per week, and the prices quickly go up from there depending on season, type of car, and how far in advance you've rented your vehicle. Gas, you're gonna have to fill up your tank at some point. Going from Tokyo to Kyoto is gonna cost anywhere between 50 to 70 US dollars. Tolls, there's gonna be tolls because you will be taking expressways. 
Expect to pay around 10,000 Japanese yen each way. From Tokyo, you will take the Tomei Expressway to Nagoya. Once you're in Nagoya, you will switch to the Meishin Expressway to Kyoto. This is a nice drive, but it's gonna take you anywhere between five and seven hours, depending on how many stops you make. And I recommend you stopping at at least a couple of rest areas. These are called Michinowekis. So in addition to having restrooms and restaurants, they also usually have local products for sale, such as fresh fruits and vegetables. And that's usually a really nice experience. Also, consider in Japan, they drive on the left side of the road. Roads can be very narrow and winding, and you need to have an international driver's permit, your passport, as well as your driver's license. So if you've never driven on the left side of the road, and this sounds daunting to you, you may wanna pass on this option. But let us know if you want more information about driving and renting a car in Japan or an RV. We've done both. In particular, renting the RV was an awesome experience. I'll link to a vlog we made about renting an RV in Hokkaido. Finally, there's guided tours. If you prefer a hassle-free and a fully organized experience, then a guided tour is a good option. We've personally never done this, but we did meet a traveler who did, and she said the experience was fantastic. What she really liked about it is that she didn't have to plan anything. She just didn't want to plan anything. So if that's for you, then this could be a great experience. There are plenty of tourist companies out there offering comprehensive itineraries, including transportation, accommodations, guides, you name it. And what's great about these companies is they can take you to places that you weren't even thinking about, and this could be a great cultural experience for you. What are our recommendations? If you want the smoothest and fastest option, our choice is to take the Tokaido Shinkansen. And if you are purchasing your ticket individually, meaning you don't have a JR Pass, then take the Nozomi, as it will take you from Tokyo to Kyoto in about two hours and 15 minutes, which is the fastest time of any of the options we discussed today. And this is our family's preferred method of transportation. Second choice, if you're on a budget and want to save on a night's accommodation, then taking an overnight bus is a great option as long as you can actually sleep on the bus and don't mind arriving early in the morning. With prices starting at 2,200 yen, this is hard to beat. What about flying? Well, we personally would only ever fly to Osaka from Tokyo if we were staying right next to one of the airports. Even then, flying is usually never an option for us because we don't want the hassle of having a check-in, go through security, especially if you have kids. So again, our preferred method of transportation is taking the Shinkansen because it's fast, easy to use, no security check, and arrives on time. And I just need to mention again that all the options I discussed today are just either estimates of cost and time because things can change. And also, I did not include any cost to actually get to your departure station as this is going to vary depending on what form of transportation you're taking. But in general, these costs will be negligible. For instance, if you're staying in Tokyo and you're taking the Shinkansen or taking a bus, then it's probably only gonna cost a couple hundred yen to get to the nearest station. Whereas if you go into the airport, it's gonna cost a little bit more. Well, I hope you found this information helpful. Let us know your questions in the comments below and if you have any other tips to offer. And next, you might be interested in how to buy individual Shinkansen tickets and collect them. We are a slow traveling family. We have a lot of videos that will help you with your travels in Japan and a lot more to come. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching.